Hey guys, let's talk about ATR. So I assume you've watched my video talking about how it works in general. Here I want to talk about individual parameters. The first thing you want to set is the strength. There is A strength and B strength, which just stands for the uh, strength uphill and the strength downhill. And I, uh, I have them fairly aggressive here. But those two are your key parameters you want to tune in order to see how the board behaves as you go up and down hills. The next one that to me are the most important ones is the ATR threshold, both uphill and downhill. Those are basically the degrees of ATR response that you want to ignore. So the first 1.5 degrees in my configuration here are going to be ignored so that on flat ground that you basically have little to no ATR impacts. And um, that makes it easier to have fairly aggressive ATR settings without that affecting your ride on, on flat ground. Then there is the max angle. I like to have mine really high, basically so high that I never in practice never reach it. 12 degrees is quite a lot, but um, you do want ATR, if it's properly configured, you should not need to cap it. Some people I've seen, they have really weird settings and then they just cap it to like three or four degrees and then they're basically limiting what they can get out of ATR just because their whole response is kind of effed up, but they... Uh, do get the feel that they're looking for on moderate terrain. So I recommend keeping that angle fairly high and trying to tune the rest so that it all feels good. And then if you're really going down something crazy steep, um, then you don't have to worry about your ATR being limited artificially. Now, one more that has been recently had some uh, discussions is speed boost. This one here, is essentially how much more ATR response you get, more or less. Now you can also go into the negative, which I wouldn't personally do, but it gives you the ability to say how much more intensely it should react when you're going fast. And to me personally, I have always known, I mean, the whole reason why I introduced it in the first place is because I noticed that no matter how strong my ATR is at low speed, when I get faster, I always feel like I needed more. So this is what that boost does. And the default is 30%. And the only reason that I started increasing it is once I started going down this really steep hill and I started going faster with like full gear on, I noticed that my tail was scraping once I got over 10 miles an hour. So that boost allows me to now go down the same steep trail at higher speed and still get about the same feel from the ATR as I get at low speed. Why some people feel like they need to have that less, I don't know. I'm not a racer, I don't use remotes, but be careful, don't just blindly set this to minus 20 30 percent and then go down a fast hill because you might not get the behavior you're wanting now the the second row here is all about how quickly it reacts so the defaults are tilt speed of five up that means how many degrees per second it will lift the nose and the next one is the return speed or the release speed so when the ATR, when, when the ground levels out, how quickly does it go back down? And the reason, A, I don't recommend having them symmetrical. So don't do five and five or seven and seven or something. Keep them different in order to avoid oscillations. And you can try going higher, but it may make your board feel really nervous and twitchy. So it can solve some of the transition issues, but in general, I find a more mellow 
speed to be uh, more effective. Now, the next two, they actually, I added those because I was riding trails that were, that had some ups and downs in them. And I noticed that there was opportunity to increase that response speed, the change of the nose angle without making the board more nervous. And the first one, basically the idea is this uh, response boost. It's about making the response faster, making the nose tilt more quick when you're um, riding at a higher speed. And the second one is when it detects a transition, then it increases the speed. So if it notices that you're going from a downhill straight to an uphill, then it cranks up that response speed. So instead of a five degrees per second, you get three times faster uh, nose tilting. So that would turn into 15 degrees per second if uh, it detects a transition. So that I found really effective. I always ride with it at 3.0 and um, that helped me a lot. So that's the idea of that. All right, now the last two. Those last two, they um, determine the ratio between the amps put out into the motor and a unit of acceleration. So on flat ground, you would need nine amps for one unit of acceleration. And those values, they will affect how your strength feels. So if the A strength and B strength are set to 1.6 and 1.4, and you now double the A ratio, it would essentially cut the strength in half. So I would recommend not messing with it unless you want to tune it for a really light rider or for a really heavy rider. But if you're an average weight rider between 150 and 100 and 200 pounds, I would just keep it as is and then tune the strength. That's the idea. And also, in general, I highly recommend that you carefully read the description of each of them because it really tells you everything you need to know. So um, if you forgot what something means, just long press on any of them and read the description. It really will be helpful. 